After a long journey from Pittsburgh to New Jersey, Pete successfully acquired this vintage gem and heads back home with the Impala in tow. Clay eagerly awaits for its arrival back home at Iron City Garage. Together, they will assess the car's condition and determine if it can be revived. Get ready to witness the transformation of this classic beauty as Clay gets to work, trying to breathe new life back into this 1962 Chevy Impala convertible. Sure, that's why I was getting beat that high beam because we were losing shit out of the trunk. Here you go. Thank you. All right, we're back next day. Everything was cool last night. We got in daylight now. We got the car unstrapped, ready to go in the shop. We're gonna dump it in there. We unloaded the bed of my truck already. Everything's inside. All the pieces to put this thing back together. All the emblems, the trim. It's a super solid car. We'll show you that when we get in. Floors are good in this thing. Needs a trunk pan. Needs a little bit in the quarters from being driven on the East Coast, but you never really find an Impala convertible that's not like a total rot box. This is an excellent restoration candidate. It really is. All the roof bars are there. They're in nice shape. The pinch wells are on the car. Have a complete interior for the car. So we're really excited about getting this thing back together and uh, finding it a new home. So let's get it in the shop, see what we got. <laughs> Probably get it jacked up in the front real quick because we got the wrong lug nuts and stuff on the front. We're gonna mess up my wheels, so uh, probably get the wheels off the front. I got a strap stuck in the front, so that's it. Start seeing what we got. Get the trunk opened up and get these little bit of parts I got on the inside out. Give it a bath. Start working on the motor. See if it runs and moves, and then we'll get into putting it all back together. Probably cut what's left of the trunk out so it's not all flopping around. I actually have the keys to this thing too. Hmm. So I got trunk key if the cylinder's still in it. Yep, cylinder's still in it. So yeah, you're not gonna fight that. I got the keys. Probably leave the magnets on it for as long as you can because this video will get pirated like crazy. Good, Jim. All right, buddy. I will. All right, man. Bye. Man, we should get one of those metal roller things and just make our own. Now you can buy a trunk pan pretty easy, but it's just really not worth messing with. I mean, maybe if it's real solid around it, I might have you weld one in because it looks like it is. It is. 
I was already on. This looks like a brace. Uh, these look like somebody put these braces in. Yeah, that, it has a couple of those throughout that. Yeah. Not too much, though. No, I was already eyeballing it. It actually looks decent what they did. No, they did the same thing over yeah. there. It didn't do bad. Nah, I mean, it's not factory, but it looks like a body shop did it or something. Because they folded it over here and made it look nice. I don't know. We'll have to look at pictures of real ones and see what it's supposed to look like. I mean, typically you don't see a lot of overlay. I'm not like a pro at these cars, but I can go in our aluminum pile here. Sam, put that in the pile. Oh, cool. We got an old sign. Restaurant vegetable meat. Hmm. Too bad I ain't. I don't know. I might clean up. Can always sell a sign. Doesn't really matter what the content is. Yeah. A little bit of the CLR on that spot. This oh. is so solid for the. It's like only a little spot for the same kind of work in here. Yeah, a little no, patch. Right. Yeah, same thing on that side. It looks like the passenger floor pan, maybe. I can't tell. Yeah, they did a little bit over there, and there's a little bad spot right there. Right. Yeah, where, right where the brace is. Yeah, but it ain't Still, terrible. No, nah, it isn't. But, um, so my grandfather, for some reason, loved my pap, but he really liked Fierros. And I would bet my last dollar that that's a Fierro steering wheel, because we had like four of them things. I own a Fierro. 85 Pontiac Fiero. Really? Yeah, I still have it. I hate that thing. All right, enough Fiero talk because those cars suck. Yeah, this is a 307 and a four speed. Not original to this car, not supposed to be in this car. We'll probably try and get factory valve covers on this. If I have a steel set, they would look a lot better. Not a, well, a non chrome set, they're all steel. Um, probably do. We might be able to I take them off that. Or... Well, yeah, you might be able to take them off that blue truck. Or put sell. these ones on it. Yeah, something like that. See if we can get a factory fan blade on it, just to make it look more original. We might have one. That's, That's an old style aftermarket. Yeah, the factory radiators in um in the box. Yeah, these are the fiberglass blade ones. Was oh, that factory ride any good? I don't know. Probably not. You know, if this runs good, I would just leave the aluminum one in it. See, so got sure. ram horns on it too. Yeah, run the numbers on it anyways, in case he was wrong. I think that's yeah. a two barrel intake too, is it? Yeah, it's a two. Yeah. Solid car though. Real solid car. I see car. your light real quick, Shane. Find out the GoPro light is movable. <laughs> well, Good, read it to me. V0922 DF. Okay, is that it? Yeah, we're gonna go look real quick. There we go. So it's done. So this is a 307 from a Chevelle. This one is the DF. This is a Chevelle, 68 Chevelle is what this came out of. I'll vacuum this out and clean out this garbage. Because this is a 307 from a 68 Chevelle. Okay, cool. Yeah, I mean, we'll probably So that explains it. the ram horns. Yeah, we'll probably leave it in there because the car's better moving under its own power. Somebody can sell that powertrain if they want to. I don't, I'm not going to mess with it. But yeah, jack it up for sure. Get the strap out. Get the right lug nuts on it. See if we have the fact. I think we just need one steel wheel. There's a Kreger on the back side. So you have to find okay. one more of these. I would get it since we have fair weather today. I would probably wash this thing. That's today. what I want to do. Yeah. That's, I was going to shot back the inside. Get it all sprayed down and stuff. Yep. Get yeah, the I'd engine cleaned up. Definitely bathe it today because we're, I don't know how long this, this fair weather is going to last. Yeah, no. we're, we're due for rain and, and cold. We'll get that, the wheel situation taken care of real quick. Like, yeah. then, you know, we'll have a strap out there. Yeah, then we'll, I want to throw the strap back in the trailer. And as soon as we move the trailer, yeah. we'll push it out and oh, wash.
Will you hit that? Alright, we're running. Running good. Here in about three minutes. Alright, I'm gonna get a can ready. I gotta get gas in it. Yeah. Let me tighten these real quick and I wanna tighten the terminal. I know it ran recently. Pretty good. Okay. Okay, you wanna crank it for me? Go ahead. Go ahead. Keep cranking. All right. Ready? Yep. We have to get this here off and that way we're gonna have to get like a little container to put there because as we compress this down ourselves it's going to spray fluid out Okay, that's our fluid side. We got fluid here. Oh, oh shit. Can't do everything at once. Okay, 
now we need to get this all cleaned off. Glove box. Glove box. This is a pad that goes underneath like this, like so. Another knob. I'm just seeing what all is here. Get all this stuff put on. Somehow I got the radio to turn on. Yeah. yeah there I don't know where this. This would have went up in here. Let me see how it mounts there. Is this one? Oh shit. Been lucky there. Alright. So nice and tight that is now. That thing that bolts up in here, though. This you can just smear around and like put it on as you want it, but honestly we can just do the whole car with it and it's just gonna give it that little brown tint.
choice. You put all that stuff. Yeah, I'm pretty good about that. It's like Christmas on Halloween. Oh yeah. Some brakes. Trunk pan. What are you holding? Put these things right here. Yeah. Yes, sir. Looks like them. Thank you, Richard. Which one do you want to start at? This one, you think? How's that seem? This one wants to. Okay, so we're going to trim off some of this. I think we're going to end up laying just in here. And then we'll cut around it. You know, we're going to do a base cut to get all this old stuff out, but we'll cut around it and butt it, do a butt well. We're not going to use all that. We're just going to replace what we got too. So that I don't change any structure inside here. I don't want to change on this because it's original and some good solid shape. So if we just go like right in here and where all this rust is gone, and then I get it to butt well. You know, remember how we did that? Get a delay, like... Delay on the door? Yeah. Yeah. It'll just fall pretty much right into place, and... I think that's going to be the safest route of doing this. And it's going to be the nicest because you leave this factory edge and stuff on here, and it's just a little easier that way, I think. <laughs> Like a little too deep in here to do what you're trying to do. It's going to be a kiss that it's this piece that's me. I need to cut this out like that, and I'll use the metal that's there. 
because I gotta get this in tight like that. So whenever I do this, whenever I cut, make that cut or leave everything in with a you know screwdriver and stuff, it's real easy then. But this is how it has to go. See how it's falling in, right? It's this piece that's screwing us. much fall back there so we need to get this side welded like this but let me check underneath and see if, how close we are oh man we're tits so we could probably start back here how we're going to do this is we're going to do like you know this section here we're going to work our way all the way around then whenever we get to the buckle we're going to cut at the steepest point of the buckle and just allow it to all fold back in then we'll tack that weld it up and smooth it all the way around you know and that's going to be our best way of doing this because given what was there and stuff this is the smoothest way you could probably ever do this just like that see how you could get it flush perfectly flush all the way around you could use a screwdriver bend it back and forth you know it allows you to fully get it flush how it should be like this so we just got to take our grinder like this. So you see what i was saying how it's perfectly flush where i did that look it's perfect you cannot get any better than that and that's how we're going to work it all the way around an actual good welding part because like i use it so much man this thing Whenever I take a piece of cardboard or whatever I decide to use, that's why I cleaned it real good this morning because this stuff. I want it to be decently nice. What we're going to use here is a piece of cardboard like this. What I like to do is just take it like so, smooth it right like that. That's it. That's all you want. It's all perfect. It looks perfect looking, ain't it? Well, and then you just paint it black after, huh? Yeah. It's going to go flat black. Are you flat black in the whole trunk or just the inside? Probably just this inside piece. It's about as good as you get with it, though. A little bit on it. Because I made two rollers, painted them and stuff, and they're laying over there. You know, get everything ready for the because I want to have like the brakes done then I'll do the brake lines you know I'll walk through take all the tires 
tires off, all the wheels off, then uh, you know I'll go through and take all the drums off. Then I'll strip them all one by one, just so it's all getting done at the same time. Packing them. This out. I have these pieces for this. Then these front ones, they're gonna be fun. Well not really, they're not that bad, but see they bolt right here. So let's hope all that stuff comes out good. Now, I think what we're going to do is do everything in the front. Where's this stupid brake line that crosses over in the center? Real nasty. I'm going to have to do it. Actually, I don't think it's going to leak. It just looked like it was, but it must not have been, because that's a good line. Probably end up having to replace this one that's going over to that wheel, like on that side. And this one looks pretty good. It's in pretty good shape. So when we replace this, which we're going to get to that as soon as we button up this front, we're going to put that master cylinder and then our whole front's done. This line might be good. We're gonna trace it and we're gonna check it. I know I had this cross one here that crosses over isn't good. I know that, but this might be. so far to see if it hits out. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, yep. I heard it coming. fluid everywhere now. Oh, that you can kind of see, see inside that little slot. That's where the adjuster is. more like it okay okay we got brakes all the way around what i'm going to do now is top this off and then uh oh, yeah. drop yeah, we got brakes and <clears throat> technically we can put some fuel in it and take it for a ride if you want it not late. Dude, not late. Really, it's so crazy. Yeah. Jay-Z is not the greatest rapper of all time. So we're having problems with this car that I wasn't making a big deal about. Clay's no longer with us for a bunch of reasons but we're trying to do our closer video and the car wouldn't run right and i kept telling clay it was having a problem and he's like oh it's fine and i just decided not to argue about it put it back in the shop joe's here i told clay to do a compression test on this thing from the get-go as soon as it came in the door he put juice and fuel to it it fired up he thought we were good i'm like dude everything that comes in here has to get a compression test that's like standard like me and joe thought after we heard the miss it had a dead cylinder Joe had to do a little bit of valve work. Now that cylinder's at 120. There's also a six volt coil on the car that Clay put on it that burned up all the points in the, in the distributor. So now Joe's getting it all back right and this thing's gonna run amazing. Um, also, Joe was able to fix the carburetor that we were trying to replace. Uh, once I took a look at it, I've been working with Joe long enough to know that that carb was repairable. Um, 
Hold on, Petey. I got Junior with me today. <laughs> He's kind of handicapping me a little bit. Um, but this thing's gonna be really, really, really right here. Hopefully after today, maybe one more day. And um, that's it. Welcome, you know, but it, but it's true. He just really got it. Yeah, I couldn't argue with him. I mean, it was. I kept telling him this car is not running right. Like I know it as a carb issue. No, it's just cold. I'm like, Clay, no, you keep misunderstanding how many cars I've owned. I know how what this sounds like. Joe came in and said, "This is all messed up. That's not a vacuum advance. That's a choke pull off." It needs rebuilt again, the wrong gaskets are in it. It was never gonna work right the way that it was. So he's going through it again. The other reason why the car wasn't running right is we had a, a cylinder at zero PSI, which I had said that to him that when we had it running the first time. I'm like, Clay, I've owned a lot of cars. Like something's not right. He skipped the compression test on it. That's why we always do a compression test. If the motor turns, it's getting a compression test. That's law. He skipped it. That's what we ended up with. So Joe fixed that. Uh, what was the problem there? A valve, right? Yeah. Yeah. So Joe, what'd you do, lap it or? No, just worked it with penetrating oil until it started. So it had a stuck valve, he just worked it with penetrating oil, worked it up and down until it moved freely and it was seating and then we had 120 pounds on that cylinder. So getting it back together, but you gotta really be careful when you're rebuilding the carpets while they give you 15 gaskets. Find the right gasket. Make sure you're not blocking ports and jets and stuff. Make sure it's seated right. Make sure it's not blocking anything else. They use these carbs in a bunch of different applications. So getting it together, he's getting to float in it now. It, rebuilding a carb shouldn't be a fast thing. If you've rebuilt a carb on a bench in 15 minutes, that was way too fast. It takes a long time. You gotta get all the gum out of it, all the varnish out of it, make sure everything's moving up and down the way it should be. They're complicated, even though they're not supposed to be complicated, but they, they are. That's why we have fuel injection now and everybody likes it. But he bench tests everything. Like he filled this bowl up with fuel and he put the spring in it and he's working it up and down making sure the main jets were squirting. That's the kind of thing you need to do before you put it all back together and say, hey, let's see if it works. Bench build it, bench test it, then you get in the car. All fresh, clean. He's getting everything. See, he's testing it right now. Old school. This takes a little more time. Old cars take time. Hiring a new guy is going to take me a long time because I want somebody that's going to do things the way I was taught to do things, which is from him. You gotta move slow, take your time. This is not a brand new car. You're not gonna plug a computer in it. It's not gonna tell you what part to pull off the shelf. That's why old cars are expensive to get worked on. They're just a time consuming thing. Good. Joe gets his Christmas music back. Filming now. It's always been filming. Or do we call it? Now, it's going to be hard to find somebody that is universal, you know, because everybody today is some kind of specialist. Like they just do four cylinder heads, for example, or something, you know, and that's all they want to do and that's all they know. It's like this here. This, what I'm working on right now is a choke. This is a coil, a bimetal coil that heats when the gas crosses over the manifold and it opens up the choke, see? Mm -hmm. Well, right now, it's so weak that it can't close the choke. Well, I didn't know that till, till I just now connected it up, you know, figuring that it was good all this time. You know, now you're getting ready to start the car and you would like, it, it doesn't have to have a choke, but the way Pete wants them to start and run, it needs to have, it needs to have a choke. Yes. I'm hoping I could save it. I'm sure these are still available. If not, sometimes they're adjustable. Now where you really might find that is with a phone call to like Eckers and tell them what you're looking for. What's that thing called? Choke thermostat, I believe that's the right name. Yeah, okay. See, so what's the part it. number on there that may help you? That's it though, Pete. You got right on it, right there. And yes, I did assume that it was good because it was connected up at one time and I've never seen one of these this bad as usual. I'm just gonna try going to Summit because they ship so quickly. What's that? 40. 40. 
Yeah. Oh, I don't care if it's saying that little. Yeah, I. Uh, well, yeah. If you shop, you might be able to find it cheaper. All right, you watch for fuel leaks. Okay. If anything leaks or scorts. Okay. We'll do. We'll shut it down. I'm only going to start it for a minute. Yeah, that's fine. Because I got to put the timing light on it, but I want to check for fuel leaks first. sticky valve issue there. Yeah, it sounds real clacky, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, and I was expecting that, and I wanted to tell that to you, but I forgot. <laughs> Set the timing. The reason I told you to move is because this shifter's yeah, goofy on this car. Forward, right? Yeah, if it lunges, you want to be out of the way. Yeah. Getting better.
reason is that after it gets a little heat in it, we're going to need an anti-freeze mix here.
62 Impala is all done, and as suspected, really before we could even finish it, the car sold. So, um, unfortunately, if you were interested in it, it's already gone, but that's the way it is when you're selling something that is really desirable. So, the 62 Impala was originally white with a red gut. It was originally a V8 uh, automatic with a bench seat. At some point, this thing was changed over to, well, not at some point, in 1980, when this gentleman bought it, you saw us buy it from, he bought the 63 bucket interior for it. Um, it was changed over to a 307 and a four-speed out of a Chevelle at some point. Um, and that's it. It's just a good car for restoration because it's very complete, just missing a very easy-to-obtain drivetrain, a 283 or 327 and an automatic. is not something that's hard to get, so um, real easy car to restore. Uh, it's going to California where parts are plentiful. There are tons of Impala guys out there, um, tons and tons of Impala parts, um, lots of vendors out there. There's Classic Industries. There's a Chevy shop. There's dozens of guys that just specialize in Impala trim. There's probably hundreds or thousands of shops that are capable of doing the work. Uh, there's guys out there that pound all the dents out of the trim. There's guys out there that'll hand carve all of this bright work and stuff if you want. Um, the low rider community is alive and well and very strong in California and they love their Impalas. There's no better place for this car to go than sunny California. Um, so I knew it was going to end up there. I'm happy that it's going there. This car will live a long, happy life in California in the hands of our buyer, Kenny. Um, we're excited to get it out there to him. Probably going to ship out this week here, second week of the year. And um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you know of any more of these things or a Fastback Mustang or anything like that, we'd love to talk to you about it. If you got a car or a, uh, you have to fix this. If you got a garage full of cars, barn full of cars, pasture full of cars, let us know. We'd love to make a deal with you. Um, and that's it. Hope everybody has a happy new year. And we'll see you on the next one. It's going to be that international scout over there. We're getting getting into the shop and getting worked on soon. We're excited about that. And uh, that's it. See you guys. Hey, thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have cars like these in your garage, if you have a fastback Mustang or convertible Impala, a nice original paint pickup truck or an old cab over truck, and you want to sell it, I'd love to try and put a deal together with you. You can get a hold of me at 412-335-6100. We pay excellent prices. We pay finder's fees. You know, it's no secret. We do make a little money on the YouTube video, so that allows me to pay, you know, sometimes market value or really good prices for these cars. We'd love to come out and drag it out of your barn. We'd love to film it. We'd love for you to be a part of that whole process. So if you have an original paint or an original old fastback Mustang that needs work like these ones I have on my trailer, or if you have an old pickup or again, a convertible Impala cab over truck, whether it doesn't matter where you are, we buy nationwide here in the United States, all the way as far as California. I've had stuff, New Mexico, Arizona, Oregon, Washington, high desert stuff we love. So, or if you're in the East Coast and it's a rusty Mustang or a rusty convertible Impala, that is fine. We typically don't buy many trucks on the East Coast, but I buy a lot of cars on the East Coast. If you have cab over parts also, especially for these early Fords, I'd be interested in that. And never hurts to send me an email or a text ironcitygarage at gmail.com you're welcome to send me an email or a text message probably the best you kind of get an instant answer that way 412-335-6100 i'd love to talk to you hope you enjoyed the video and uh, hopefully we can make a deal on what you guys have on your farms or in your garages